gonna win this game, okay? We going to war. This, this ain't gonna be no close game. We gonna make a statement. You are looking live at downtown Chicago, Illinois. Welcome fans inside the booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza joining you. And we've got a great matchup tonight. The Atlanta Steam coming into to Chicago to battle their rival, the Bliss. But is it a rivalry game? This is an Atlanta team that's lost four consecutive games to Chicago. So for a closer look at whether or not this is a rivalry game, I welcome in my broadcast partner, Mr. Bobby Huco. Bobby, what do you consider this game to be? Definitely not a rivalry. A good game it's going to be. In fact, it's a must game for Atlanta. You can't consider a rivalry because of that, what you said. Chicago's won every time. But going into the playoffs, Atlanta needs some momentum. And it's going to start with those triplets. Quarterback to Cody Hughes, widely renowned as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Running back Brittany Demray, she has to have a big game against that tough Chicago defense. But the question mark is wide receiver. Lauren Ziegler is out. Their star receiver's out. Teresa Petrozillo, she has to play big tonight. Now, Ziegler's a big addition for him on both sides of the ball. Offense and defense, that'll be a major loss for Atlanta. And her Teresa Petrozillo, one of the most complete wide receivers we've had in the game for quite some time. Let's talk about Chicago a little bit here. They lost a pair of aces, namely in legendary quarterback Heather Furr and also star wide receiver Allie Alberts. Did they miss a beat? No, no. Coach Keith Hack, one of the best recruiters in the game, alongside a Harbaugh perhaps in college football, him and his, uh, him and his staff really recruited in the offseason. They brought in a pair of aces, one on the offensive side of the ball in A.J. Johnson, the absolute scoring machine at wide receiver. Have a lot of people forgetting about Allie Alberts, the way Johnson's been playing here in her rookie season. On the defensive side of the ball, it's Kristen Morrison, the middle linebacker, one of the best tacklers in the game and an absolute great edge rusher for Chicago. Now, if we're going to talk about one key for tonight for both Atlanta and Chicago, what are those keys? Well, for Atlanta, it's that running game. They have to open it up. Chicago's defense is one of the best in the LFL. They have to develop a running game. And for Chicago, you mentioned it, the quarterback, Barkley, she has to get the ball to A.J. Johnson. They have to get that chemistry going against Atlanta. And that'll do it for us here for the pregame show. It's the Atlanta Steam taking on the Chicago Bliss. Say it with me, America. Kickoff is next. We are back to LFL football night. A beautiful weather night here. 72 degrees at kickoff on the south side of Chicago. It's Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. The beast of the east. I'm looking forward to this game. Two powerhouse teams here in Chicago. And Dominique Collins sailing. The opening kickoff out of the back of the end zone. Jesse Locklear will not get a chance. The Chicago Bliss wearing the camo, orange and blue. The Atlanta team with the red and black, and that is Dakota Hughes, the heralded third-year quarterback. Hughes needs to play big tonight. I mentioned it in pregame. I consider this a must game for Atlanta. They've never beaten Chicago. Hughes has never played that great or threw that well against that tough Chicago secondary. It's going to be fun to watch. That is one of the things Dakota Hughes said. She has really marked this game. And you could see the numbers in the 2016 season, 109 QBR. Very impressive for the third-year quarterback. That is Brittany Demry. And look at the power back, freshly off suspension. Demry did not meet weight standards, has been cleared for this game, and goes for 13 yards. Wow, what a start for Atlanta. Coach Robinson, Dane Robinson, has it in his mind that his offensive line can overpower that strong defensive line of Chicago on the first play. Unbelievable run to start the game off for Demery. Great opening for this offense. Ball at the 22-yard line. And that's Demery again getting to the second layer of the defense. A six-yard carry tackled by Dominique Collins. Demery part of a revamped offense. Let's meet the starters. Jesse Locklear, wide receiver. Teresa Petrozello, wide receiver. Ariana Barton, your tight end. Adrian Purnell, the tight end. Whoa, Joe, your Atlanta Steam Center. Brittany Demery, running back. Dakota Hughes, quarterback. We mentioned that Atlanta running game had to play big tonight and a solid start. Two consecutive runs, three now by Demery. What a job the offensive line is doing. And I'm not sure how much of that is the line versus Demery carrying tacklers, gaining five yards. That was Kim Perez on the tackle. Perez tackled way down the field. Where's that middle linebacker, Morrison? Let's find out as we meet the starters for Chicago. 
Dominique Collins, cornerback. Samar Fennell, corner. Kim Perez, free safety. Tamika Robinson, strong safety. Kristen Morrison, middle linebacker. Chantel Taylor, your D end. Yashi Rice, defensive end. That line for Chicago, as we can see, they have to come up huge against this running game for Atlanta. That looked to be a busted play, a poor snap by Dina Wojowski. Looked to be a draw play. Intended for Brittany Demery not happening. Dakota Hughes trying to salvage anything, gaining a yard. You can't have that so early in the game, especially the way they're starting off. They're pounding the ball, they're moving the football, moving the chains, and then they have a quarterback center exchange problem. You cannot have that and be a championship team. Ball down to the 10-yard line of Chicago. A great opening drive here by Atlanta. Play action pass now in the pocket. Looking to the end zone and just overthrowing Adrian Purnell. Timing wasn't there. Purnell was wide open. That's a rare miss for Dakota Hughes. Watch this. She stepped up in the pocket nicely. Play action. She steps up. Purnell wide open. She just overthrows her, unlike Dakota Hughes. Set up a third and nine for this offense. Missing some firepower tonight, as we talked about in the pregame show. Lauren Ziegler, the league's second leading receiver, not in the lineup. That's why they're going to keep it on the ground. That is Brittany Demry running loose in that secondary, gaining seven yards, setting up a fourth and two. Coach Hack telling his secondary to come up. They're playing smash mouth offensive football on the Atlanta side. Hack is bringing the safeties up because right now their linemen, Taylor and outside Rice, they're not getting the tackles. And in middle linebacker, Kristen Morrison, where is she? They're running right through Chicago's front line. Well, there's a lot of size on that front line for Atlanta when you look at it. Dina Wojowski, Adrian Purnell, and the recent insert, Ariana Barton. Now a fourth and two, and that is Brittany Demry going back to Demry. Our first touchdown of the night coming on the heels of Brittany Demry. The big uglies up front for Atlanta just simply getting it done, drive blocking. They could have walked in the end zone. Nobody could penetrate that offensive line. What a start for Demry. What a start for Atlanta. Wow. We talked about the size of Demry, five foot nine, 170 pounds. And I think she's more around that 180, a real, a true power back, a lot of muscle. I'm gonna tell you what, this is shocking. I mean, the, the passing game for Atlanta's not there, the running game is. And why not? They go back to Demery, and I'm not sure she got in, partner. I don't think she did. Finally, Chicago stepped up. They brought the safeties up, they brought Morrison up. They knew the ball's going to Demery. They finally got penetration. I don't think she got in. And I'm not sure who made that tackle. That looks number 19, Chantel Taylor. Look at her just fight off the block and get after Demery. That is what they're going to need against this power back. An early look at head coach Keith Hack of the Chicago All Blitz. All it has to do is break the plane. All it has to do is break the plane. And it looks like we have a challenge here. Atlanta challenge that she had scored, and after further review, the play on the field stands. So our score will remain six to nothing. You really got to hand it to Kim Perez. She stopped the running back right when she was going to break the plane. Perez yanked her back and stopped the score from Atlanta. But what a start. I got to hand it to offensive coordinator Mark White. I thought they'd come out throwing, especially with that safety fry out of that secondary, but they ran it right down Chicago's throat. And that is Jacinda Barkley. Barkley having an amazing first year season with LFL USA. Won a Legends Cup championship with the new South Wales surge of LFL Australia. And look at her numbers, a 91 QBR. Very impressive. Now a first and 10 for the Chicago offense ball at the 15. That is Harris in motion. This could be a free play as Atlanta jumped. Looking down the field, has a receiver. That is Tamar Fennell, the free agent pickup from the Toledo Crush, coming up big. Was this Jacinda Barkley or Aaron Rodgers? She drew the line off sides with her cadence, and instead of just taking the penalty, she looked deep just like Rodgers does in the NFL. Found Tamel for six. What a start for Chicago. 
referee Tom Hug indeed indicating that was an offsides penalty on Atlanta. Declined and seconds later, Tamar Fennell, not Matt Tamel, Tamar, Tamar, Tamar Fennell with a 35-yard touchdown reception. Tamar Fennell is a coach's dream. She's unheralded. She be, she was all fantasy in Cleveland. You mentioned that in Toledo. But here she in Chicago, a lot of superstars around her. You place her wide receiver, she does this. You place her defensive back, she makes interceptions. Just a coach's dream. And you can't discount the fact that she is yet to win on any team. This is her best shot. It might happen this year. Now the extra point attempt. Quick slant intended for Tamar Fennell. That fell incomplete. Anything you want, their secondary is terrible. Hot garbage. Hot garbage. Coach Hack not approving of the Atlanta secondary. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout in a 6-6 to -6 ball game. John Joy, protecting LFL athletes and the game. Back to LFL football night on the south side of Chicago. And through four minutes of play, we've got a dandy 6-6 six to six as Atlanta takes over from its own 15-yard line. That Atlanta defense, they needed a big stop. But the first play, Chicago goes deep and scores. Looks like Atlanta's content to keep it on the ground with Brittany Demery. Demery gaining six yards. You could see that. She plays with passion and sometimes a little reckless. Demery is definitely a workhorse, not a show horse. Look at her size, just powering through Chicago. That was a six-yard run by number two, setting up a second and four. You could see the very slick, lean front line of Chicago. They really meant for more of the speed game and getting after the quarterback, not necessarily stopping the run. I, I agree. You got to hand it to offensive coordinator Mark White coming up with his running game. I expected this. I expected passing all night. A second and four. That is complete. And into the end zone, Teresa Petrozulio subbing in for Lauren Ziegler, and that is a 29-yard touchdown reception. What a great read by Dakota. They kept brought the safeties up. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Petrozillo one-on-one against Dominique Collins, and she won that battle, and a great pass by Hughes. Finish it. We need all the points we can get. All the right, inside lead, right side, Gotta love the aggressive nature of this offense. You talked about offensive coordinator Mark White. More than likely will be nominated as assistant coach of the year. And he keeps it on the ground on the extra point attempt. That is Brittany Demery. This time converting over Yashi Rice. That'll give Atlanta an improbable 13-6 early lead. And Chicago's number four ranked offense now has some work to do. Let's meet the starters. AJ Johnson, wide receiver. Tamar Fennell, wide receiver. May Gamble, tight end. Brittany Wilson, tight end. Stephanie Murray, center. Ferrari Harris, the running back. Justin DeBacle, quarterback. Look for Barkley to look for her go-to receiver, AJ Johnson, all night. They're going to keep it on the ground, and when in doubt, who do you go to? The longtime legendary running back. That is Christelle Ferrari Harris gaining eight yards. Coach Hack is thrilled this year that he doesn't have to give the football that many times to the Ferrari. She's not going to get that many touches, which makes her a fresher running back going into the playoffs. That is an excellent point. Nearly 80% of the offense the previous two years went through that young lady, number 13. And Harris breaking off another eight-yard run. This time pushed out of bounds by Teresa Petrozulio. And now let's meet the Atlanta defense. Keon Harrison, corner. Alfie Gore, defensive back. Adrian Purnell, your strong safety. Teresa Petrozello, safety. Nekawani, your middle linebacker. Dina Wajowski, defensive end. Brittany Demery, defensive end. <laughs> No, you don't have to do a double take. That was former Chicago Bliss star Neka Nawani starting at middle linebacker. That is a first down handoff to Christelle Harris. Look at Harris. Three rushes in a row, eight, eight, and seven yards respectively. Because of the development of running backs Javel Thompson and Shabria Savillian, 
right now, the Ferrari Harris, she only has 11 carries this season. That's why she is okay, so fresh. And that's Black only one on element of the story. Ready Keep in mind, they've left. added A.J. Johnson to Mar Fennell. Oh, and by the way, a franchise quarterback in Jacinda Barkley. So they actually have a passing game now. They don't have to rely solely on the Ferrari. Now a second and three play. Jacinda Barkley back to throw. A great pressure inside by former teammate Neka Nawani. Receivers were open right there. Neka Nawani is a beast in the middle. She's going to be a force for Atlanta. Just throwing blockers away. Barkley could not step into the pass. Broken up. Great play by Neka Nawani. A lot of bad blood between Nawani and this roster. Specifically head coach Keith Hack. She very unceremoniously left the team and then signed with rival Atlanta. Great pickup by Dane Robinson, especially against your rival Atlanta. You bring in one of their stars of last season and she's playing super so far. That handoff to Brittany Wilson, nothing doing. And we've got our first fight of the night. We expect a few of these. As benches are starting to clear. That was head coach or assistant coach Matthew Pike. He took a punch right to the face. That's incredible. Pike got hit right in the face. These two teams do not play well in the sandbox. This is incredible. You could see Lauren Ziegler trying to calm down Adrian Fernell. A little bit of joking around, but that was very serious as both benches cleared. We're going, to think, we're going to get a call here from the referee crew led by Tom Hug. But let's take a look at a replay of this. There is no love loss between these two. And you can see there's Dina Wajowski coming in late. And then the fight broke out. That's Chicago coach Matt Pike pushing an Atlanta player and then getting socked right in the face. That is something you never do as a coach. see coach Dane Robinson not happy with Dina Wojcicki who came in late that is what started that fight came in late but then on top of that you cannot in any circumstance punch an opposing coach you're going to get penalized you should be thrown out of the game after that Atlanta penalty Chicago will have the ball first and goal inside the three yard line you grind the f up and you play some great football all right, this quarter will pass. You will weather the storm, all right? But right now, we're not meeting the demand. We're not meeting my expectations. Coach Dane Robinson is just not happy with his defense right now. Not happy at all. It's almost a must game for Atlanta against Chicago, and they're having silly penalties like that, punching an opposing coach. You cannot do that. A first and goal. Ball at the three-yard line. Handoff to Christel Harris. Three-yard touchdown run, capping a very impressive drive by the Ferrari. Is this 2012? The Ferrari looks like a rookie. She is running with more pep than I've ever seen, walking in the end zone. She is ready for the playoffs. Coach Hack has to love this. Christelle Harris, indeed, very fresh. I thought that was a great point earlier on, Bobby. Not being utilized, only touching the ball 11 times this entire season. She's got to be fresh for this postseason run. You really have to give a lot of credit to Coach Keith Hack. He developed two other running backs to take the heat off of the Ferrari, and it shows she's ready for the playoffs. And that looked like Atlanta jumped. That's Dina Wachowski. Great open field tackle by Teresa Petrozulio. But that may be negated. This looked like Wachowski jumped. That's twice today quarterback Jacinda Barkley has used the cadence as a weapon. indeed on Dina Wachowski and you simply cannot do that you cannot give this offense any more attempts at the end zone not at all we got a prize fight today this is a great football game two beasts the beast of the east going at it look for the quarterback sneak here as Chicago's known to do that on extra points 
That is exactly what's going to happen. That is Jacinda Barkley. She's going to convert the two-point conversion, or at least at the field. We'll see if Atlanta challenges this. Whoa! 14 Whoa! to 13. He made that? He got that? He said he got that? Yeah! Hey, get that the out of here. She in this Shut up, y'all. She ain't talking to you right now. I ain't talking to you right now, bro. We're not fighting. It's cool, though, because I'm out to handle you, though. I want to call the play. Adrian Purnell clearly not agreeing with the call on the field. All you have to do, though, is break the plane, and Barkley obviously did that. The rest right over him. Purnell just fired up about this game, fired about her defense, and now she's playing offense. This is a hell of a game so far. Mitch, I love this LFL football at its best. Here we go. And you could see Purnell still calling out Yashi Rice. We'll see the two go after it in this play. A first down play, handoff to Brittany Demery. And at the bottom of the screen, you could see Yashi Rice just swimming off Adrian Purnell. But not before Demery gains six yards. Chicago needs to call that main maintenance department right now. Put some speed bumps out there because they cannot stop Brittany Demery. A second and four now. Ball at the Atlanta 21 in a 13 to 14 ball game. Living up to its hype, one of the better Eastern Conference matchups. That is Brittany Demery. Look at her get to the second layer of the defense. A 13-yard carry. Wow. If this Atlanta offense was on Facebook, defensive end Yashi Rice would be hitting dislike all night long. Look at her get sucked inside. Demery goes outside for a huge game for Atlanta. Are you trying to relate to the Millennials here? I sure am, and it, and it is dislike. If you're on that Chicago defense, nobody expected this. This passing offense running all over the Chicago Bliss. Ball down to the Chicago 16-yard line. That's handoff to Amanda Ruler. A Ruler got hurt earlier in the season, back to 100%, and part of this Atlanta running attack. Wow, you can measure Ruler's gain by yardsticks on that. The hole was so big, you could have run through there, Mitch. Let's not get carried away, Bobby. That is five foot two. Amanda Ruler from Saskatchewan, Canada, signed this offseason from the Los Angeles Temptation. She is a fire plug, a great running back. She comes in a huddle. She wants the ball. She said, give me the ball, eh? <laughs> That'll bring us to the end of the first quarter and a fired up Adrian Purnell. Like your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories. The LFL's official Facebook page, facebook.com slash my LFL. Back to LFL football night here at Toyota Park. Oh, the south side of Chicago on a beautiful night. It is about 70 degrees as the sun begins to set. A second and two play for Dakota Hughes and this Atlanta team. And that is complete Adrian Purnell. That is an eight-yard touchdown pass. Great read by Hughes. She went after the new starter, Tamika Robinson, in secondary. Purnell wide open. Hey, did you think you could stop me? Did you think you could stop me? Not today. Not today. You can't stop us. You talked about it. Tamika Robinson playing in place of DeAndre Fry. Fry not cleared for this game because of an earlier concussion in the season. They went right after a smart play by the coaches and quarterback Dakota Hughes because she got there, but it was too late. Adrian Purnell wide open in the end zone. This is a two-point attempt by Atlanta. Hughes going to keep it. Nobody fooled there. Great tackle by Yashi Rice. Rice playing in her final home game. This is her last season and making a big impact on that extra point. You can't go outside against Rice. They tried to fake inside like it's going to be a dive play out of the I formation, thinking Rice is going to suck in, but she's a veteran. She stayed outside. Nothing there for Hughes. Dakota Hughes clearly frustrated. Did manage a four-play, 35-yard drive, taking up only two minutes. Really impressed. In fact, this is a super first half for Atlanta. I did not expect them to come in right now, be up 19 to 14 with nine minutes left in the second quarter. Chicago's defense, highly heralded, cannot stop them. That Atlanta offense is ranked number two, but with Lauren Ziegler, despite Ziegler out of the lineup, they've managed 19 points already. 
Now a first down high snap. Jacinda Barkley doing a great job just to field the high snap. And a completed pass to A.J. Johnson. You may be looking at your rookie year. Look at those stats. 11 Twins receptions. Right. Seven of them. Seven out Twins of 11 right. for touchdowns. Twins just right. amazing. That A.J. Johnson catch now setting right. up a it's first and 10. Left. Ball at the Atlanta 23-yard line. As the clock continues to run, we are nearing the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. That is a toss play to Javille Thompson. Thompson, the backup running back, gaining five yards. You can suck my d Suck my time. Come after here next time. Come after. You don't want none of this You with the wrong white girl. I might need an anatomy lesson. Did I hear what I think I just heard? Yeah, I think Dina Wojcicki a little confused. You could see the hit here late after the play. That's Brittany Wilson taking another shot at Wojcicki. Nonetheless, we've got a second and five play now. Barkley back to pass, ducking under the DN and getting out into the open. That is something she gives you as mobility. That was an eight yard carry. This is a veteran quarterback move. Watch Nick and Nwani come on the blitz. She comes in high. All you have to do is duck. Jacinda Barkley makes an excellent veteran play to get positive yardage. That eight-yard carry now puts this offense in business. Ball at the 10-yard line of first and goal. There's Nick and Nwani. She, more than anybody, wants to have one hell of a ball game and missed a perfect opportunity on Jacinda Barkley. Sometimes you get overhyped. Coming in against her ex-teammates, you get so hyped up you play two over your head. Now a first and goal handoff to Brittany Wilson. That Atlanta defense, Dina Wajowski and Adrian Purnell all over Wilson. Adrian Purnell, the all-fantasy defensive player for Atlanta, playing strong so far here in the first half. A second and goal now, ball it down at the eight yard line. Purnell being very vocal, clearly the leader of this defense, especially with the absence of Lauren Ziegler. Purnell wants this game badly. They have never beaten Chicago when she's in Atlanta. In Tampa, she beat Chicago, but never in Atlanta. A first and goal handoff now, though that's a keeper. A great setup play and dropped in the end zone. Adrian Purnell still barking. That was a perfectly set up pass. And Johnson dropped it in the end zone. Not sure she should be barking because A.J. Johnson was left wide open in the end zone. I don't know how she was too open. I mean, usually sure-handed receiver dropped it. A bootleg, wide open, great play action. Barkley just lobbed it out there. Maybe she should have fired it out there. And A.J. Johnson dropped it. Now a second and goal play. This defense trying to hold on to a five-point lead. A very competitive first half of football. That's Jacinda Barkley, another tough snap, handling it, throwing in the traffic that time. A.J. Johnson triple covered, setting up a third and goal. Actually, a good play there by Barkley. Nobody open. Instead of throwing it up for grabs, she threw it away from everybody. Just teed up again. Now this is a key play for the Bliss offense. I'm not sure why Chicago's gone away from the run game here. Christelle Harris had a lot of success in the first quarter. I agree. They pull Harris out of the game. They put Wilson, who's a little used running back. She gets no yardage on the ground, and now they're scrambling. A fourth and goal ball at the Atlanta eight-yard line. From the shotgun, Barkley rolling right. Brittany Demery all over Barkley. Pass completed to Christelle Harris, but that will fall short as Atlanta holds. Barkley has time. She has a lot of time. Good kickout blocks. She actually had A.J. Johnson coming across the end zone on a dagger route wide open, but she went underneath and short to Harris. Didn't have a chance to get in the end zone. Give credit to Brittany Demery, putting on a lot of pressure on Jacinda Barkley. And that made her check it down to Christelle Harris. You know, Mitch, we always say big players make big plays in big games. A.J. Johnson dropped that touchdown. That's what was the key to that entire drive right there. That should have been Chicago points. First and 10 now for Atlanta's offense. Dakota Hughes inside handoff, Adrian Purnell. 
And there's the athleticism of number three on full display. Got that first down, no! Got that first down! With them blocks! Purnell picking up 12 yards. I really like the way offensive coordinator Mark White is getting Adrian Purnell involved in his offense. She is an OW, an offensive weapon, and he is using her more and more every game. They can use her in the flat, in the passing game. We've seen a bit of that in the first quarter, but also that inside handoff. This one going to the workhorse, Brittany Demry. A two-yard gain, that time great tackle. Make that a six-yard gain, actually. Kim Perez on the tackle. It's really going to be interesting to see how her body holds up. Brittany Demery, the running back, she was out on suspension. They're giving her a lot of touches tonight. She's taking a beating. We'll see how she is in the fourth quarter. Second and four now. They're going to go back to Demery. And Demery just stiff-arming through the defense. A seven-yard gain. She shows no sign of slowing down. It is amazing how Atlanta has turned from a passing team to a running team. And they're just pounding it right now. Dina Wojcicki, she's having an all-world year at center, just blowing people away. Dina Wojcicki having a little bit of problems with that center quarterback shotgun in passing plays, but with the run game, one of the more dominant centers in the game. That is a first down play, looking down the field, has a receiver. And Jesse Locklear, a tough pass, but one she should have come down with. This is what the good running game does. Everybody comes up, they're in eye formation. It's an adequate pass, not a great pass. She had to lean the other way on it, but it should have been caught. Should have been a touchdown for Atlanta. I'm not sure why they target Jesse Locklear down the field. Teresa Petrozulio has had some success. And really, without, with the absence of Lauren Ziegler, they really don't have that threat. I agree with you. Petrozillo is a great wide receiver, and that would have been a perfect setup to throw her on that deep post. A second and 10 handoff again to Adrian Purnell. That's the second big run by Purnell on this series, gaining seven yards. I would keep delivering her the football. She goes horizontal, finds a hole, then bam, goes vertical. She is a great offensive player. I love she's getting the ball so much. You're starting to see a little more balance in this offense in the second quarter. They have taken some shots down the field, but really it's the run game that's setting a lot of that up. It reminds me a lot of the old Chicago Bears with Walter Payton. They go bam, 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 then play action, throw to deep post. That's a third and three play. You could see the nifty moves of Brittany Demery. For a running back her size, she does have some mobility. Totally does. She moves great right now. I don't know why Chicago's talking a lot of trash. Atlanta's running all over them. That was good enough for a first down as we take a media timeout. Chicago down by five. Follow your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories. Like the LFL's official Twitter page, twitter.com slash myLFL. Back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco in a closely contested Eastern Conference battle. Atlanta leads it 19 to 14. Now a first and goal handoff. That is Amanda Ruler. And with her size, I'm not sure the defense can see her behind the front line of Atlanta. No, I agree. If you watch Yashi Rice, a defensive end, she took an inside release, got inside Adrian Purnell's block, but couldn't see Ruler. She ran right by her. Ruler and Brittany Demery, very different running backs. And that's a young lady we haven't talked much about, Kristen Morrison who's having a career season in her rookie year, but been really stymied this first half. She's having problems with that Atlanta offensive line. They're going right at her, the drive blocks, drive blocks right at her, and she can't handle it so far. And this is a draw play to Brittany Demery. Demery gaining four yards, this time Tamika Robinson, and Yashi Rice on the tackle. There's Allie Alberts, last year's superstar, suspended for the entire season, but she's still helping out the team on the sidelines. Doing a bit of coaching. As we know, this Chicago coaching roster is very deep. Allie Alberts doing what she can on the sideline. This is a third and goal keeper. And Dakota Hughes getting into the end zone to extend Atlanta's lead. A read option. She read the play. The cornerbacks, watch the defensive end. They all came down. They thought Demery had the football. There's absolutely nobody outside. Great read by the quarterback, Dakota Hughes. 
give credit to the offensive play calling of Mark White. They set up that quarterback bootleg the entire drive. Dakota Hughes, she has the option to keep the ball in her belly, give the ball to Demery, but she pulled it. Nobody outside, saw nobody outside, just walked in the end zone. Atlanta going for the extra point attempt. Trying to further extend this lead. That is a toss play to Brittany Demery, and why not? But a great open field tackle by Kim Perez. Kim Perez all over the field. Just a normal night for Perez, but that's not good for Chicago when your safety is making that many tackles. That means your linebackers and defensive line, they're not making tackles. Give credit to that Atlanta offense, though. Nine plays, 46 yards, taking up nearly five minutes. I am totally shocked how they are manhandling this defense. Demery having a career night so far. Let's go. Chicago once again taking over. You talked about it earlier, partner. This is really a heavyweight bout. Every time a team scores, another answers. We'll see if Barkley can do just that. A first and 10 play from the 15. Barkley looking to pass down the field, has a receiver. Christelle Harris getting it done on the ground and through the air. Wow, this is just an incredible pass. The only time you see passes like this are on Sundays. Watch her step up in the pocket, a wheel route by the Ferrari right down the sideline. Tom Brady could not place that ball any better. What a pass by Barkley. Just an incredible pass. I love it. You never saw that kind of placement and accuracy from Jacinda Barkley in Australia. The development that she's had Next under right, the tutelage left, of Matthew right, Pike, left, the right. quarterback coach for Chicago, has really paid dividends. Matt Pike, he is the answer. You're right. He's going 24 hours a day, and it shows that pass. That was incredible. That is an extra point attempt. Harris fumbles the snap or the handoff. I'll do this. I'll work. I'll work. Hey, Demery. What's your name? You Demery? Oh, nice to meet you. All right, baby. Christel Harris having a little fun there. What a 35-yard reception. We don't know about that part of her game. A great wheel route by the Ferrari Harris, but an insane pass by Barkley. It is once again <laughs> Dakota Hughes' turn. No, I don't know who wants out. We'll see if they go to the ground. You can see Dakota Hughes taking control of this offense. This will be a two-minute offense. Under 40 seconds remaining. And this Chicago crowd coming to life. Another poor snap. Hughes looking to chuck it down the field. Nobody there. Jesse Locklear was triple covered in coverage. You mentioned it as good a year that Wojcicki's have, and she still has problems on the shotgun snap. That throws the whole entire playoff. There's nobody open. She just throws it out there, but somehow Wojcicki's got to work on that shotgun snap. With the shortened field, certainly the amount of time that's left here in the second quarter, plenty of opportunities to take a few shots at the end zone and maybe work underneath because you do have a timeout. Now a second and 10, dropping back to pass use. Completing in the flat, that is Adrian Purnell. Actually, Teresa Petrozulio, and that is a 13-yard gain. Great eyes by the quarterback, Dakota Hughes. Nothing open downfield. She shuffled her way in the pocket, bought some time, and then found Petrozulio underneath, who's a great athlete, made something out of nothing. I want, I want slant far. Slant far near Cowboy. Slant far near Cowboy, cover three. Cover th slant far near Cowboy, cover three. All right? Yeah. Coach Hack, a little out of breath there. I don't think he expected this kind of production from this Atlanta offense against his defense. I thought that he thought that he was going to have an easy game against this team. But this is a shootout. It's a barn burner. And look at the pressure. That was Tamar Fennell and Chantel Taylor all over Hughes. Hughes did get rid of the ball, but this could be intentional grounding. What pressure. It could have been two personal fouls. Watch the shot to the head. Bam, bam, two to the head. She goes down. No penalties. Watch this. Bam, bam. Is that Jason Taylor or Chantel Taylor? Wow. And it 
Indeed, this could have been an intentional grounding on Atlanta. We're going to get the call from head referee Tom Hunt. What are you reviewing? It's a face mask. And everybody's a little perplexed. They're going to actually review this. I, I, I kind of concur with that call. Are you me? They can't just grab him. You need the face mask like that. Hey, bro, like, he's, Coach he's making a call. He's the one who's there. What, 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 Tom, you can't grab the face mask like that. It's on the replay. Coach Dane Robinson asking for a personal foul. You said it. I agree with him. Not only once, but two blows to the head of Dakota Hughes. Nothing called except for the intentional grounding. That's crazy. The one ref threw the blame to the other ref. I like that. But that was totally a personal foul. A second and 27. Look at Kim Perez come out of nowhere. And that's going to be intercepted. You talk about a ball hawk. Watch her the way she accelerates when the ball's in the air. He was trying to get the big play, trying to get the yardage back. Perez comes out of nowhere, cuts in front of it, makes a great athletic play. Ball going back the other way. Now, this is interesting. You've got a little bit of time here. Do you take a shot at the end zone or go into halftime losing by five if you're Chicago? When you have quarterback Jacinda Barkley and A.J. Johnson, a wide receiver, you totally take a shot. And Coach Dane Robinson asking his defense to get back. You've got to anticipate a shot at the end zone here. A.J. Johnson flanked to the right, as is Christelle Harris. And Barkley just trying to buy time. Nothing there. Going to take off with it. Nowhere near the end zone, and that will bring us to halftime. And Chicago trailing this one 25-20. Barkley actually looked like a rookie quarterback there. Last play of the half, you have to give it a shot at the end zone. You're not going to run for a touchdown. She didn't. Know, I don't think she knew it was the last play. She would have thrown it up. She has a talent at receiver, but just not a good play. And that is officially the end of the first half in a game that's lived up to its height. Chicago down 25 to 20. Shut up! Shut you know what Jakowski just told me? I thought you had a better middle linebacker. They're getting five and six yards of crap running right up the middle of the field. Right up the middle of the field. You know what that means? It's real simple. It's called big balls football. Big balls football. I know it's a bad analogy right now, but you guys don't have big balls. You're getting pushed right off the line of scrimmage. Nerves are on edge inside that Chicago Bliss locker room as we welcome you back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Now, Bobby, we've got a Chicago home team trailing 25 to 20 at halftime but a closely fought game. Great first half. That's what you get when you match up the two elite teams in the Eastern Conference. But the surprise for me was Atlanta's running game. Brittany Demery incredibly had 80 yards already in the first half. She did. A great power back, exactly what Atlanta needed for this offense. On the Chicago side of the ball, we talked about the rookie sensations, A.J. Johnson and Kristen Morrison. But the real story was who? Christelle the Ferrari Harris and then Kim Perez. Ferrari Harris racking up yards on the ground and then Kim Perez with this late second quarter interception. Tell you what, you can't rely on rookies to make the playoffs. I like what Atlanta's doing. They're relying on their veterans. Quarterback to Cody Hughes and on defense, Adrian Pernell had a great first half. Now, there was a lot of scoring in this one, 25 to 20. Let's look at some of those scores. Brittany Demery, you talked about her in the pregame show on a three-yard power back run that gave Atlanta an early lead. That was followed up with Dakota Hughes on a 29-yard touchdown bomb to Teresa Petrozulo, subbing in for Lauren Ziegler. Then it was Dakota Hughes finding Adrian Purnell on another score through the air. And then finally on the ground, Hughes taking it in on a three-yard run. That accounted for Atlanta's 25 points. On the Chicago side of the ball, Jacinda Barkley, the Aussie quarterback, finding Tamar Fennell, the free agent wide receiver, a 35-yard touchdown strike. That was followed by Christelle Harris running it in on a three-yard run, then hauling in a 35-yard reception from Jacinda Barkley. That brings us to our halftime score of 25 to 20. Let's look at the first half stats. 
a lot of offense in the first half. Atlanta, they'd racked up 147 yards. In Chicago, they had 134. But what surprised me the most was Atlanta's pass-oriented team had 97 yards rushing in the first half. Incredible. A lot of yards and points in the first half of this one. That wraps up halftime festivities here in Chicago. We return you for the final 20 minutes of the regular season. Say it with me. Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night under the stars of the city of Chicago. A 25 to 20 ball game. And here is Amanda Ruler kicking it off. Back to receive Tamika Robinson. Robinson showing some good patience now, getting to the outside, nobody there. And look at the speed of Robinson. Only the second kickoff return for a score all season. Are you kidding me? What a way to start off the second half. What an athletic play. The ball almost goes over her head. She makes a great catch. Watch this. She outside, breaks people's ankles. Boom. Cuts this way. Come back out. Horrible lane containment by Atlanta. Nobody outside staying in their lane. And she walks into the end zone. What a start in the second half. Watch this jump cut right here. Bam. Bam. The other way. The entire special teams for Atlanta goes the other way. Nobody outside. And she walks in the end zone. What do the coaches say, Bobby? Stay in your lanes. And what incredible patience by Tamika Robinson to just sit there and wait for the blocks to develop. And when they weren't there, she reversed field. Patience and athleticism. I didn't know she had that in her. You're right, she waited. And then she broke ankles with those jump cuts. What a play. Now a two-point attempt by Jacinda Barkley overthrowing A.J. Johnson. Those two have not had a lot of success tonight. That's a lack of dissonant by the quarterback right there. Again, A.J. Johnson wide open, a fade pattern in the back of the end zone. She threw it way outside. Johnson had no chance. Atlanta will take over now after Chicago. Not even touching the field offensively with the exception of the extra point. Tamika Robinson taking it to the house on a 34-yard kickoff return. Tamika Robinson. Wow, maybe you have to put her on offense. They're the first half numbers of Dakota Hughes. Not great. Three of seven. She did throw a pick. Now throwing into the flat. Not sure who that was intended for. You couldn't stop me. So you had to get up on me? The Adrian Purnell picking up where she left off. interference on Kim Perez. Perez close too quick. Purnell on a deep out route. Not a great pass. I don't know if we'd be caught anyway, but Perez did get there too early. Adrian Purnell, she's big, she's larger. Deceptively fast, and you could see Kim Perez was caught off guard there. All she could do was tackle Purnell. That's a draw play to Brittany. Demery could not get her footing. No gain on the play. She had a hole there. She found the hole, but she just tripped up on her own player. Demery having an outstanding game so far. I'm just amazed at this Atlanta running game. Brittany Demery getting to your earlier point in the first half. Does she have the juice to get through an entire game? You can see her first half rushing stats, 80 yards through 20 minutes of play. Again, look at that run defense. Is it safe to say they made an adjustment at halftime? Well, Keith Hack is one of the best defensive coaches in NFL history. Of course, he made some adjustments. But getting back to your point, 80 yards in the first half, that's almost on LFL record pace. Is she tired here in the second half? So far, two runs, no gain. And none of those yards were 20, 30-yard breakaway runs. That was a grind, an 80-yard grind of plays of four, five, six, and seven yards. Very impressive by Demery. And here we go again, another high snap by Wajowski. Now making up for it. That is Wajowski on the stiff arm. And telling the defender about it, that is a nine-yard gain. If Atlanta has any aspirations to win the title this year, they need to get out of the shotgun because Wojowski's killing them all year long with these high snaps. And that dates back actually to the Eastern Conference playoff last year. Here's a replay look at Wojowski going to the head of the defender. But that has been a constant problem for this offense. 
A fourth and one. Atlanta has got to keep this drive alive. Handoff, of course, to Brittany Demery. Look at her motor. That'll be a six-yard gain, enough for an Atlanta first down. Wow, she did not look tired on that run. She looked shot out of a cannon. She got that hole so quick and got the first down. It looked like Yashi Rice got the brunt of that hit. That is an encroachment penalty on Chicago, obviously declined. I'm not sure Yashi Rice wants any piece of Brittany Demery. Coach Keith Hack, you can see he made a lot of adjustments at halftime. They're bringing a lot more people in the box, and it's working so far. I mean, I shouldn't say that. They're moving the ball, but not like they did in the first half. A first and goal draw play to Demery, and like you said, they read that. Give credit to Kristen Morrison, who we haven't called her name the first half, getting in to make the stop on Demery. That entire Chicago defense, they had a lot of talking going on in the halftime huddle to make adjustments, and they had to. They were getting destroyed, and they're going to see this team later down in the playoffs, and they're going to have to make a lot of adjustments. Two weeks exactly in Seattle, Washington for the Eastern Conference playoff. Inside handoff, Adrian Purnell. Hey, did you think you were going to get me? Did they think they were going to get me? Get the out of here. Get the that is three inside run plays that have had a lot of success against this defense. That's almost like an inside reverse, the Y under. You got Demery and the quarterback both going left. The entire defense went left. The defensive ends got sucked left, and there was nobody out there. Great call, Y under for a touchdown. Atlanta now going to line up for a one-point conversion. Stand low, stand low, stand low. Leading this one 31-26, to 26, a lot of offense. I frankly thought we'd get a little more defense in this game. Me too. I love this offense. I mentioned that at halftime. This is a fun game to watch, the beasts of the East, but I thought it might be a defensive game. Demery extending Atlanta's lead 32-26. to 26. Back to LFL football night. The home team, Chicago Bliss, trailing this one 32 to 26. As Jacinda Barkley in the offense goes to work. First and 10 from the Chicago 15 yard line. Barkley under center in the pocket, looking down the field as a receiver. That is A.J. Johnson. We talked about her in the pregame show, Bobby, and she came through. She made up for her earlier drop. Watch this pass, number one, standing in the pocket. One-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Circus catch by A.J. Johnson. Here we go again. Chicago threading the score just like that. What about the concentration of A.J. Johnson to bobble that football and keep her feet in bounds? And by the way, that's happening from a rookie wide receiver. Well, we know she's got that all fantasy talent one on one. She's going to usually come down with the ball. But Barkley standing in the pocket under intense heat on that blitz, threw it up for grabs and it was complete. Great play by both of them. First and goal. And that looked like Atlanta may have jumped again. Give credit to Barkley and her cadence. Absolutely. Atlanta's defensive line has to become more disciplined. This is the third time the cadence worked. You're so stupid, Nani. Coach Keith Hack still coaching up his former player, Neka Nawani. Not positively, but still giving some advice. I'm getting misty-eyed right now for his love of his former players. That is a first and goal in Jacinda Barkley. Look at the size of the former national rugby player. Just charging up the middle here. She is a beast at quarterback. I love her, man. She can throw and she can run like that. She is strong. Watch out for her in the playoffs. I don't think you can make enough of Barkley in this system. Very blue collar, exactly the approach coach Keith Hack has adopted for this entire franchise. Dane Robinson from Atlanta, he has to find an answer for her in the playoffs. She is tough. This is the extra point attempt. Again, Barkley keeping it. This time cutting to the outside and getting in. Chicago regains the lead at 33 to 22. She is playing top-notch football. Has there been an Australian ever win the Legends Cup? I don't recall if we've ever had an Aussie win the big one. 
We've had a Canadian, Stevie Schnorr with the Seattle Mist, who is part of LFL Canada, but I don't believe Seattle had an Australian player. It is unbelievable what she did this year. She came in just a couple weeks before the season, got with quarterback coach Matt Pike, learned the system, almost beat the champs, and just has played outstanding football ever since then. A first down handoff. Brittany Demery in the open field and loses her footing and now getting knocked. I'm not sure what happened there. She could have gotten up and run that ball in. I don't think a single Chicago defender touched her. That looked like a freight train going right up the middle of the Bliss defense. Where is Kristen Morrison, the middle linebacker? Kim Perez, she's been all over the field tonight. She wasn't even there. Chicago challenging this. I think this is a touchback. Nobody touched her. Watch this replay. Great blocking. Watch the block on Perez. She trips over her own feet here. Nobody touched her. She goes down. That's a fumble right there. Petrozil had a chance to pick it up for a touchdown, but she kicks it out of the back of the end zone. Hey, that's a fumble on the back of the end zone. You know what? He didn't call her down. He called her down. He's saying she, this is not a reviewable play. She is down because she gave herself up. But the other players, I'm going to say this, had no idea because she's allowed to pop back up, but she gave herself up. We're here to protect people. We're not here to get okay, somebody hurt. Uh, okay, but you know that was a cheat. I understand, but they don't know she's not going to get up and play. give a lot of credit for coach uh, head referee I should say Tom Hug with the explanation but he's dead wrong no that's uh, it's a game he, she wasn't giving her tough thoughts she thought the play was over that's her fault she wasn't taking a hit the ball popped out Petrozil had a chance for a touchdown that's not really a protection play I don't think I've ever seen a head referee do a Jedi mind trick on coach Keith Hack wow Jedi mind trick against Hack first and goal handoff Brittany Demery Gaining three yards. In all likelihood, this should have been a touchback. And ball goes to Chicago at the 10-yard line. No, you're right. And Keith Hack, I don't know if you know this, he has two degrees. One in psychology and one in reverse psychology. And that nets out where? To a Jedi comment. <laughs> Second and goal now. Ball remains at the six-yard line. Atlanta continues to threat and answer every touchdown by Chicago. Dakota Hughes under center, faking the handoff. Look at the pressure coming from Dominique Collins. Collins coming in on the corner blitz. Dominique Collins coming hard, kind of a green blitz. Nobody came her way. Her receiver never came out, so she was on the blitz, got to the quarterback. Great play. that the ball was intended for me. Tom Hug not buying it. That'll be the second grounding call of Dakota Hughes. I actually agree with Adrian Purnell. Hughes was getting hit on the blitz. And when you get hit, you don't throw accurately. She was trying to get the ball out Purnell. It wasn't close, but I wouldn't have called intentional grounding. Ball backed up to the 19-yard line now. This Atlanta offense going backwards. A third and goal. Hughes from the shotgun. That snap is always scary for Wojowski. Complete in the flat to Jesse Locklear. Locklear gaining four yards. It'll still be a fourth and long here. Chicago trying to put heat on Dakota Hughes. They might have come in a little early there. That is an offsides on Chicago. So it goes from a third and goal at the 19 to a third and goal from the 14. Really got a hand to Coach Hack. He made halftime adjustments, and it's showing. They're going after the quarterback. They're going after the running back. The safeties are coming up, and they're playing a lot better than he did in the first half. We'll see if this offense takes a shot at the end zone here or tries to make this a little bit closer on a fourth and goal. They're back at the 14-yard line here. Receivers are flanking to the right side. Hughes in the shotgun, rolling right, throwing into the flat. That'll be incomplete. Pass was intended to Brittany Demery. And it looks like we've got yet another flag on this play.
This is back and forth. What they gained from the offside penalty on Chicago, they more than lost. Now they're backed up to the 24-yard line. Wow, this has turned into almost an offensive drive for Chicago. They had the ball inside the 10, the 5. What yard line was it? And now they're back at the 24 going the other way. Yeah, they were at the 6-yard line when Hughes got sacked by Dominique Collins and they got the intentional grounding call. So now a third and goal nearly at midfield. I don't think we're ever going to get past this third and goal play. I've never seen this. This is a great offensive defensive drive for Chicago. We are nearing the two-minute mark of the third quarter in a 33-32 ball game. Hughes throwing down the field, and that could have been interference intended for Jesse Locklear. It looked like Kim Perez was in coverage, but that could have been face guarding. Not sure why she's targeting Jesse Locklear. I mean, not that she's not good, but you have Teresa Petrozillo, one of the best receivers in the history of the game, replacing Lauren Ziegler, and they're not throwing her the ball. A fourth and goal now. They'll have to attempt Respect something the at the end zone. I am a respectable player. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Enough, 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 enough. That's, that, that's saying something. When Coach Robinson has had enough chirping, He's got to be frustrated with his offense now backed up to midfield when they were at the six-yard line. They're going backwards, and they had this game in hand, and another bad snap. That is Dakota Hughes trying to get through all the traffic. Kristen Morrison, nothing in the first half, and turning it on here in the second. This looks like the old Chicago Bliss defense. Look at this. She could have handled that snap. It wasn't that bad. Morrison coming up doing what we saw her do all year long, throwing Hughes down. What a stance by that defense by Chicago. You can see Dakota Hughes a little rattled in this game. Kristen Morrison, you cannot say enough about that rookie middle linebacker. Certainly would get my vote as defensive player of the year. And there's another big notable player. That's Christelle Harris. That did not take long. Harris on a 22-yard touchdown run. Christelle, the Ferrari Harris, she could not be peaking at a better time for the Chicago Bliss. Jim Bruner, the offensive coordinator, I got to hand it to him for finding two backs so they could spell Harris so she can run like this going into the playoffs. That is the old Christelle Harris, former MVP. I remember doing a broadcast earlier this year, Chicago versus Seattle, where Christelle Harris looked very average at best. Totally average. If I was Dane Robinson, knowing that you have to face this team in the playoffs in two weeks, he cannot be a happy camper night right now. Seeing next Harris, next the floor, run one, like this, and having their quarterback, Z, Barkley and A.J. Johnson, yes. they have so many weapons. How do you stop them? I like to go back to the earlier point with Christelle Harris. I have not seen number 13 run like this since 2012. The Ferrari is definitely back. An extra point attempt here to A.J. Johnson. Great coverage. That looked to be Keon Harrison breaking it up. What's up with A.J. Johnson's hands? Usually sure-handed tonight, they're like stones. I'm not sure she legitimately had a shot at that. That was a great break on the ball by Keon Harrison having a little fun with Coach Keith Hack. These two have known each other now for a number of years. We call them rivals, but as we said in the pregame show, Atlanta's got to win a game here. They have to win a game. They play good football. The first half, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chicago, but they've never beat them. Dane Robinson has become like Marv Levy of the Buffalo Bills. He gets there, but he never wins. The bridesmaid, never the bride. Brittany Demery trying to change that on a two-yard carry. Great tackle by Yashi Rice. And Kim Perez quietly, number 10, Kim Perez is having a heck of a ball game. Kim Perez always comes to play. One of the best safeties in the league. She doesn't get a lot of publicity, but solid football player every week. And Yashi Rice, her final home game here at Toyota Park. You can just bet on the fact that she's pretty revved up for this one. She's revved up for the playoffs. When I spoke to her this week, she wants this game tonight bad, but more so, she wants another championship, an LFL Legends Cup for Chicago. A second and eight handoff again to Demery. 
And look at that Chicago defense converge. They may be outmatched physically. No, she's a big and she is. Horse. That's a workhorse, baby. So what we talking about? Hey. It took about 16 of y'all. Only got 12 on the squad. 14 on the squad. Gotta love Yashi Rice and Adrian Purnell going after each other all night. All night long, a lot of trash talking, but six Chicago defenders could not bring down Demery. She is simply a beast in beast mode. Well, guess what, partner? We are down to the final 10 minutes. We'll come back for fourth quarter action, 39 to 32. Back to LFL football night. That's a look at Allie Alberts, the all-fantasy wide receiver and safety, serving a one-year suspension, expected to return to the ball club next year. She's fired up about next year. She's not happy about not playing this year. One of the all-time greats in the LFL, one of the prettiest, as you can tell, but she'll be back with us next year. You just made that very awkward, Bobby Huco. <laughs> a third and three now, ball at the 22 of Atlanta. Atlanta has led most of this ball game, now trailing this one 39 to 22. Really impressed with both teams so far. Here it is, end of the game. You talked about Atlanta maybe getting tired, maybe Demery getting tired, and you're 100% right. Right now, the edge goes to Chicago. They're getting stronger and stronger. Did you see Chantel Taylor absolutely light up Brittany Demery? She's a different player in the second half. We didn't talk about her much in the first half. Right there, totally lit her up. That was a big-time tackle on Demery because hey, that hey, forces hey, a fourth and under, three now. Under. Look at Coach Keith Hack. He knows the importance of this stop. His team up seven points against a very powerful offense. An offense, though, that cannot get out of its own way sometimes. This could be a false start on Atlanta. False start on number five. That is Jesse Locklear, the backup running back. So it goes from a fourth and three to a fourth and eight. How does that change your scheme? Well, the way Demery's playing, you could obviously give her the football, hope to get eight, but they're not going to do that. They have a great quarterback to throw. She needs to get some momentum going for herself into the playoffs. We'll see what she has. That's an excellent point, Bob. I think she doubts herself a bit against this defense. So this is a vital play. Fourth and eight, a dump off and a drop ball. I don't think Demery would have got it even if she held on to that football. That would not have been a first down. Not a good pass selection by Dakota Hughes. Coach Keith Hack, he flat out told me that Dakota Hughes cannot throw against his secondary. And he might be right. Somehow, every time they play Chicago, she doesn't light it up. She can't throw into tight coverages. That's what he told me. He might be right. It's going to be interesting. She needs momentum for the playoffs. This could be the best secondary in football, to Coach Keith Hack's point. But if you're Dakota Hughes, you've got to gain some success. This is Jacinda Barkley now, who has been successful. Although that was a little uh, pass in the dirt intended for Tamar Fennell. Fennell came up big in the first half, not much here in the second. Dina Wojowski can start her own stand-up hour as much as she's been talking tonight. Absolutely. It looks like Atlanta lost a lot of their fire. I mean, you can just feel it. They came out in the first half, bam, 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 toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chicago, but right now it's all Chicago. Second and 10, still a lot of time left in this ball game. over eight minutes. That handoff to Harris. This time nothing doing. Her former teammate, Neka Nawani, and Brittany Demery. Chicago can just wear you out. Atlanta was up two scores. I mean, that's a that's a three-score turnaround. Now they're down one score, okay, and Chicago's on. driving again, you know, totally turnaround. Like it's demoralizing going into the playoffs. Number one, you've never beaten this team, and now you got to play them again first round of the playoffs. Yeah, the psychology of this, forget about the scoreboard for Atlanta, for now anyways. You've got to just win a ball game going into the playoffs. Now a third and 10. That's a reverse play. A.J. Johnson losing the ball. Does manage to recover it, but that'll be a loss of yards. Let's go! Let's go! Good job. Dina! Dina! Get there! Get on that ball! Watch the ball! Hey, see the first down, Mark.
motherfucker. Nothing behind you. Rule number one. Keon Harrison has got the field. Coach Dane Robinson firmly understanding the importance of this fourth down. As Barkley comes under center. Now sending Christelle Harris in motion, top of the screen. Barkley back to pass over the middle, has a receiver. That's A.J. Johnson. And Johnson getting out in the open, loses the football. That looks to be Keon Harrison on the recovery. And we've got a penalty on the play. What a play by Neka Nawani against her old team. A.J. Johnson had a couple jitterbug moves, got outside. You thought she's going to the end zone. Watch this. Good play by Barkley. Steps up, only a two-girl rush. Hook pattern. Johnson cuts it back across. You think she's going in, and then Nawani strips her from behind. That's a fumble. You could see the look on Coach Keith Hack. This game could have been blown open if A.J. Johnson gets into the end zone. Wow, what a turn of events. It could have been first and goal inside the two-yard line for Chicago. Instead, it's Atlanta's ball. Now, A.J. Johnson, she's great, but she still is a rookie. When you catch the ball coming across the field, you become a running back. You have to hold the ball high and tight, sensing people are going to come from behind trying to strip the football. Atlanta now down seven points, plenty of time remaining. Just under seven minutes, they're going to go back to their workhorse. That is Brittany Demery. And I don't think this defense is going to allow her to march down the field, although she gained eight yards on that carry. Absolutely. They have to go the length of the field. The defense, you're right, it's eight yards, but they are playing better to get to the football. It's going to be inter interesting if they're going to open it up at all and let Dakota Hughes try to throw against his secondary. Brittany Demery, give her credit, having been suspended the previous game. She got back into football shape, and you don't see her winded right now. She is on a mission. This was our concern, Bobby, that she'd be winded at this stage in the ball game. but look at her. Now they're going to try another Y inside handoff, Adrian Purnell. An impressive six-yard carry. And we've got more laundry down on the field. Both teams at times self-destructing if this is on Atlanta's offense. I like referees, but I, I don't like to see them this much. That is an encroachment call on Chicago. They'll decline it and keep the Purnell run. Keith Hack, he looks calm, cool, and collected. One touchdown lead, six minutes left, defense playing strong. This Atlanta offense started at the three-yard line, have done a good job advancing the football. And here's Dakota Hughes, Adrian Purnell in the open field, gaining 17 yards, and that is Purnell down. Wow, that's not a good sign for Atlanta. She does not look good. Let's take a look at this replay, and you could see number three, Adrian Purnell, hyperextending her knee. Two weeks before the playoffs, that is the last thing Dane Robinson needs for this team on offense and defense. Wow. Make no mistake about it. She is the heartbeat of this team. A big contributor on both sides of the ball. They could ill afford to lose Adrian Purnell. I think you called it. I mean, I had seven knee operations. The way she came down on it, it didn't, hopefully, didn't look that serious, but I think you're right. It did look hyperextended. You could see the LFL medical staff, Coach Dane Robinson, Atlanta fans back home with their hearts in their mouths, waiting for the outcome of this. Definitely holding their breath. This would be a killer if Purnell was out for the season. That is a good sign right there. You could see movement in the knee. So that could be just simply a hyperextension. They're gonna try to get her up here. Let's see if she can put any pressure on it. There she is walking off the field, obviously assisted. Trying to be a badass and not get tackled. That is the warrior, Adrian Purnell. We'll see if she can return. And 
and we are at a media timeout, 39 to 32. We'll see if Purnell returns. Back to fourth quarter action of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. Atlanta trailing this game 39 to 32. Hughes back to pass. Look at the pressure. That is Sean Tell Taylor. You could see the frustration on Dakota Hughes. Nobody comes off the edge faster in a straight line than Chantel Taylor. Hughes should have seen this. There was no protection, no help. She should have got rid of the football, just thrown it incomplete, because there's no way she was going to get away from Chantel Taylor. That was a loss of seven yards. Backs up the ball to the Chicago 23-yard line. Again, a lot of time remaining. That's offensive coordinator Mark White. He knows he's got to get some points out of this drive. They need points. They need momentum. They have to get their game face on for that two weeks. They're going to be playing in the playoffs. I cannot believe the amount of penalties in a game like this. Atlanta, they got to step it up. Dakota Hughes, she's a great quarterback, but this is not one of her finest games. I mean, she has to be sharp going into the playoffs. She has to come up with something here in the next four minutes. That is one of the knocks in this offense. They seldom hand signal in any calls, and that causes delay a game sometimes. That is Brittany Demery, a nice 12-yard run by number two. The one thing Chicago is going to be prepared for in that playoff game is this running game. They're going to be studying this for two weeks. What blocking by everybody in Atlanta. I mean, Coach White's got to be thrilled in this running game. Now, can they do this again in two weeks? We will find out, but before that, Atlanta's got a shot here. They're still down by seven points, and now they face a third and ten after that 12-yard Demery run. Dakota Hughes back to pass, looking into the flat on a... That was a play earlier intended for Adrian Purnell that scored. This time, Tamika Robinson coming up big. All Tamika Robinson needs is time. Playing in the game at defensive back, one-on-one -on -one coverage. She is all over Barton. Great play by Tamika. She's an athlete. We saw that on that kickoff return. She needs time in the game, and she's getting it tonight with Fry out. Here comes that Chicago crowd on a fourth and ten. Using the shotgun back to pass. A lot of time in the pocket, throwing into the end zone and just overshooting the 5'11", Teresa Petrozulo. She chose the wide receiver she should go to, but it was a bad pass. She had all kinds of time. She stepped up in the pocket, moved around. Watch this. She has time. Good snap, finally. She moves around, throws it deep, throws it out there. A little bit deep, nothing there. Great coverage there by Dominique Collins, forcing Teresa Petrozulo to the back of the end zone. And Dakota Hughes not having anybody. You could see the absence of Lauren Ziegler has really hurt this passing game. A first down handoff. Look at Christelle Harris get out into the open. She took on about the entire defense. A clutch 20-yard run. Mitch, hand me another marshmallow, buddy. She is on fire tonight. This is the old vintage Chris Del Harris. You got to love this. Wow. Erase that 20-yard run. That was an offside penalty on Chicago. They're booing the referees. I got to agree with the crowd. I didn't see anything, but Keith Hack cannot be happy with that. Big play bringing it all the way back. They could have been at midfield with nearing the three-minute mark. Pretty much put this game away. As you mentioned in the Marshall Marshmallow comment, this game was over. Totally over. I mean, it's really not over, but you got, I hate to say this, but you got to start looking to the playoffs. Momentum is great in the playoffs. You have to be hot going into the playoffs. And Atlanta needs a spark somehow. They have to do something here in the last couple minutes. A first and 15 now. Quick screen. That was dropped in the flat by Tamar Fennell. 
She could have gone coast to coast. The execution was perfect. The block was in front of her. The pass was perfect. You lead her so she could run, gets the ball running down the field. She just dropped the football. That's a focus drop. Right, you you have to you study the football, the watch it in your hands, easy. tuck it away, then run. Now, if you haven't watched a lot of LFL football, we have a running clock till we get to the two-minute mark of the second and fourth quarter. So we'll be in NFL rules here in 12 seconds. Jacinda Barkley under center, handing off again to Christelle Harris. And Harris has got to try to stay in bounds, although they're going to take it to the two-minute warning here. That was a big-time play if she stayed in bounds, but she lucked out. We come back for the final two minutes after this. Back to LFL football night, and boy, do we have a matchup in two weeks. It's the Western Conference playoff with Michelle Angel in the Dallas Desire taking on KK Matheny and the Seattle Mist. I cannot wait for that one. You have the old rifle versus the young gun. Two outstanding LFL quarterbacks. Meanwhile, we return to action here. That is a good sign for Atlanta Steam fans as Adrian Purnell, you could see standing on her own will. Her legs are super strong, as you can tell. You really have to hit her hard. She's got to do something drastic to hurt those knees. A third and two play from the shotgun. This is a designed quarterback keeper. That'll be enough for a first down. Cheap shot at the end of the play. Watch this. Designed quarterback sweep. She gets the first down. Wojowski, watch this shot to the head. No call there. I mean, Atlanta, well, there is a call. Head referee Tom Hug earning every penny of his paycheck tonight. So the first down will stand. Jacinda Barkley on a five-yard keeper, and that was a key first down here as they can work on the clock. They're totally going to work on the clock. I cannot believe they didn't call okay, Wojowski for the head slam after the play. A lot of these Atlanta players, I mean, they're good girls, but they're really bad girls who just haven't been caught yet. A lot of dirty play on the Atlanta side of the ball. Nobody's going to argue that. But these two will mix it up again in two weeks in the Eastern Conference playoff. That's a handoff to Christelle Harris gaining two yards. And here comes an Atlanta timeout. Chris Del Harris playing with a lot of heart. Watch her desire on this. No blocking. Two Atlanta players. She tries to split them. Gets us a little bit of a game, but you really got to like the way she's time. playing football second, tonight. Second. The old Chris Del Harris. Keep those blocks. These blocks got to be got to be hard. Yeah, right here. One and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. Block hard. You could hear that Aussie accent. Jacinda Barkley encouraging that front line. As we are in a timeout here. So I'm like, give your offense one more opportunity to get this football. Okay, let's go give here, your okay. offense one more opportunity to get this ball. Because when we score on offense, here it's going to be a tie ball game. At that point, well, excuse me, uh, it's going to be two. Once we, uh, yeah, once, once we score, mm -hmm. it's going to be one that ties it up. And two, we're probably going to end up going for a win there. All right, and we're going to win this game 40 to 39. We're going to get Coach Dane Robinson a calculator. And that is Lauren Ziegler. We talked about her. That is what they're missing just on the defensive side of the ball. Never mind the threat she's down the field as a receiver. The one of the best players I've ever seen in the LFL. Nominated for the Hall of Fame this year. I mean, they totally miss her, and hopefully she'll be back in two weeks. Look at the pressure on Barkley. Just evading rushers all night. Finally, Ariana Barton gets her down inbounds. No gain on the play, so the clock will continue to run. Smart play by Barkley. Big heat up the front. She dodges a tackler and stays in bounds. Smart play by the quarterback. That is the second time Neka Nawani whiffs we'll on Jacinda we'll Barkley. We'll timeout with one second left. Okay. okay. Ref, one second timeout. One second. Chicago electing to call a timeout here as the play clock gets to about a second. You could see very tactical on both sides of the ball at this point. Chicago cannot take a knee. They'll have to run a play. Listen up. Strong left, Z jet. We want to go strong left. Yeah. Strong left, Z jet, fake 22, wide middle screen. Do not make that fake long. Just go get it and go. Go get the safety. Go get the corner. Yeah. 
They're going to come so hard, okay? They're going to come so hard after Christelle. I'm going to run it hard. I'm going to run it hard. Stay on your belt. It's a touchdown. Make it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Make that touch. Get that corner. We got to run the football. That is a third and eight call. And I'm not sure I agree with a pass. You could hear they're setting up the pass here. Why not just hand it off and work on this clock? I agree, they're good, but they're going for the jugular. They're assuming they're going to come with a full blitz. They're going to think they're going to get the ball to Christelle Harris. They're going to come with a motion inside. They're going to fake everything, come up with a quick wide screen. That's why you said don't wait too long because it's going to be bam, bam, and hopefully break it for a touchdown. We'll see. Barkley under center, and that is exactly what they're going to do. A quick crossing pattern. That was dangerous. That could have gone for six the other way. Almost did. I'm not sure who that was intended for. Hey, remember what was wide open at the end of the first half? Yeah, run it. Well, yeah. You can see Chicago still looking to potentially throw the ball here. That is perplexing. Offensive coordinator James Bruner alongside head coach Keith Hack debating whether they should throw the ball or not. Coach Keith Hack, he doesn't care. He wants to put that final nail in the coffin. He wants to go for the juggler, which he is. I realize this game is inconsequential for the playoffs, but you got to approach this smartly. You got to run the ball. Now, had they run the ball on third down, and again here on fourth down, this game would have been over. over. I agree. The middle screen almost totally backfired. That almost was picked for the other way. We'll see what happens here. It's always fun when you don't have anything to lose. This is Jacinda Barkley back to pass over the middle, overshooting her target, A.J. Johnson. Great coverage by Teresa Petrozulo. I agree with you. Here we go. A.J. Johnson, the ball was thrown toward the middle. If she throws it toward the corner, A.J.'s got a shot, but no way she can get that. But now you got Dakota Hughes, again, who's a flamethrower. There's over 30 seconds left. They can possibly win this game. You could see Jacinda Barkley. She gave it all tonight. Absolutely. You, you cannot put anything negative against Barkley, except maybe before the half, not being aware of the clock situation. If you could add on, in addition to the MVP candidates, I would love to put her on there because what she did for the Chicago team this year was incredible. And she's not done just yet. An all-important Eastern Conference Championship again in two weeks. But now it's Dakota Hughes with 34 seconds, stepping up in the pocket, getting, trying to get out of bounds, losing the football and regaining it. They've got to kill the clock here. I really don't like her decisions tonight. Right there, a lot of time, and she's just wasted by running the ball. You waste time. At least throw it up. You got, you got the talent out there. I know Ziegler's not playing, but Petrozillo can catch the football. Yeah, you got to give it a shot down the field. You do not have enough time to run the football. We'll see if they take one here. And who is the target? It's got to be Petrozulio. Absolutely. You got to put it up. Maybe there's a pass interference. One on one, she'll probably bring it down, but you got to give her a shot. She had time to throw there, but chose to run. Hughes certainly has the arm to get it down the field from the shotgun. Looking across the middle, intended for Adrian Purnell. And I'm not sure that's a good play call. Even if Purnell catches that, do you have enough time to get under center and not kill the all. clock? I mean, it's, and it's not a good throw. She's throwing into coverage. Nobody's open. Um, it's not, not a good sign for Atlanta right now. Dakota Hughes is kind of in a funk. This Chicago-based crowd coming to life. On a fourth and seven, if they go to the end zone, this will be the final play of the game. Dakota Hughes from the shotgun, dropping back, throwing to the right side of the field. Intended for Teresa Petrozulo. And Petrozulo had a step, did not extend. Wow, that's the best pass of the night for Hughes. Well, it was a little bit out in front, but watch. She looks off the defense. I love that. And throws a strike down the sideline. Almost six. That's the old Dakota Hughes. Stepped up, had confidence, and almost got a big play. If you're Coach Dane Robinson and this Atlanta hey, team, you have somehow defense. got to get all defense. of these losses defense. out of your head because you line up against this team in two weeks. It is all mental. You're absolutely right. There are teams that you just can't get out of your mind and you don't think you can win. And then when you play them so many times and you play them so well and then don't win, it's all mental. Here we go in the playoffs and they've never beaten this team. I'm looking forward to it, but right now Chicago's got the edge. 
If there's any upside for Atlanta, it's got to be the fact that you didn't have Lauren Ziegler tonight and you didn't have Coco Montgomery. With them returning to the lineup, this is a much tougher team to beat. Well, you have one of the finest coaches in the LFL with two weeks to prepare for this team, Atlanta. Keith Hack will have a defense that will be able to stop that running game. These two will line up, as you alluded to, on August 20th with the Eastern Conference crown on the line. You know, for the Atlanta coaching staff, they're just like the players. I mean, they're going to be fired up, but they have to find something. They have to find an answer to beat Chicago. Dane Robinson, I mean, mentally, he's got to be going nuts right now. The good news for Chicago, get a win on August 20th, and the last five losses will be erased from your memory. That will do it for us here on LFL Football Night in the final regular season game of the season. For Bobby Huco, our producer Jonas Nordman, we will see you in two weeks from Seattle, Washington for the Eastern and Western Conference Championship. Good night.